Hey everyone. <clears throat> Today I just want to talk about um, I'll do a quick video just on different knife parts. Now I've got this knife here. Um, quick story in regards to this knife. Um, friend rang me up and said uh, I've got this knife. Uh, looks, it's a good small hunting knife. Well, it's quite a large hunting knife if you ask me. Um, I'm, I can get two for 20 bucks. Do you want one? It'll cost you a tenner, of course. So I said, all right. And then he came around with it, and um, I'm thinking, buck. He got it off eBay, and um, it's obviously a knockoff. Buck is a knife company, as I'm sure you're all aware. But I, I looked it up just to kind of see what, what the story was. I couldn't find a knife um, similar to this on their catalogue. So whether or not the company is... Um, just using, you know, they're just making millions of these things somewhere in China and just putting buck on it because they know that's a brand name, same as if they put Browning or Winchester or whatever, any other hunting um, name or logo. So, you know, I wouldn't have bought it if I'd known, um, but I've already got it now, so unfortunately that's the case. Uh, after I did that though, it did make me kind of look up a little bit about um, knives, knockoffs and stuff like that and there's a huge amount on there, um, mostly from um, China, I guess that's, they're the manufacturing country of the world so to speak. Anyway, that being the case, um, now this, I was going to go over part of, with this knife, I should just talk about the sheath itself actually in the sense of, you can see here it does um, buckle in. There, but it does slip. Look at that. So if you had to go upside down or something like that, climb or whatever, there's a good chance your knife's going to come out. And it's exposed part of that blade anyway. So don't go upside down. The other thing with this too is you can see inside, instead of having just this nylon sheath or scabbard or whatever you want to call it, they've actually got a bit of plastic in their molded plastic, which is good in a sense if you're not cutting this up every time you withdraw the knife, but not so good in the sense of if you're walking around because you get that kind of rattling noise. All right, anyway, let's get back to why I started the video in the first place. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about this knife. It is a nice knife. It is a full tang. So you've got the actual um, blade of the knife. Even, now this side part of it here is called, what's called the cheek. This will be known as the edge or the bevel. The bevel will be where the blade actually starts on the side. So you can just see it'll just come down and then you'll have another bevel at the end here. Alright. Cool. Now where the knife goes in here, this is what most people call a choil. So a knife can either go straight down without that gap, or if it comes in slightly, that's what most people know as a, the choil. Now you've got the spine, we'll stick to this part, you've also got the spine along here. Now there are blades that come with like a 90 degree, like this, 90 yeah. degree spine, which I prefer because a tool such as a knife is good for a lot of things. Um, Hammering is one thing, obviously cutting and scraping if you need to scrape something off. If you need to make like a small amount of tinder, scrape bark off a, a branch or what have you, you'll do it a lot more effectively with a 90 degree spine than what you will with a rounded one. The rounded one will just go along, it won't actually scrape. Alright. Okay, so you've got the knife edge itself. The point obvious reasons why it's called that, the point. If you have a rounded tip like this, and all of these terms, this, all these, the terminology that I'm using is what I've learnt. So different people will call things different things. A lot of people will know them from what I've said. Other people might know them something else. If you've got a curved blade like this at the front, that little curved bit there on the edge is what's commonly known as the belly as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so this is the belly of the blade, okay? The spine, the cheek, the bevel, along here, the choil, 
a little gap in there and the actual handle itself the tang of the knife is actually you'll have part tang and full tang knives so a full tang knife like this is where the actual blade the metal that's used for the blade extends all the way through okay some knives might only come to there just here and then it's just a handle after there so that's a part tang knife a full tang knife the knife blade itself will extend that metal piece of metal that's been used will extend all the way through to that pommel here now the pommel itself some people call it the butt of the knife which is correct too um, I know it is the pommel and probably got the name from pommeling things like that so you can use it to um, you know like hammer things in lightly or with a firmer grip you can really pound into things as well now the handle itself on this is just a rubber handle you can get all kinds of different handles from leather to paracord to um, shark skin all kinds of things um, this is a full piece there's no gaps no kind of uh, edge or um, seal or anything like that with the handle it's a full piece so they've probably put the whole piece on and then I dare say through some kind of heat process it shrank in and it's got that little grip on it too it's a really I have to give it to this knife it is a really good grip handle I prefer the rubber grip handles myself. A paracord's good in one sense, you can take the paracord off and use it. But I like the rubber knife. Now this little part here, some people call this a guard. I know it is a quillion. So sometimes you won't have that. Sometimes the knife will come straight down right into the handle. Okay? So sometimes you won't even have that choil in there. The knife will come straight down like that All right. um, it's easy probably just to call it a guard if you say uh, quillion to some people they won't know what you're talking about I quite like them just in the safety aspect you can see from here it's just giving you a little bit of a guard for your hand if anything comes down like that especially if you're using um, a steel you know to sharpen it you can just, not that you cut yourself off the steel, but it's nice to have that little bit of guard there too. If this had a hole at the end, some knives you'll realise will have a hole at the end. That's called a lanyard hole. At the, at, sometimes it'll, if it's a curved handle, like it is in, you can see this one's got a slight curve in it there, which is going to be for my index finger, and then the other fingers go at the bottom part. Some will have those continually for each finger, and then at the end it'll round off a bit. If that has a hole in it, that's called a lanyard hole. Alright, so I hope that's been um, interesting. Um, <laughs> I do like knives myself. I've always liked knives, pocket knives, since I was a kid. Um, not so much knockoffs, but um, you know, good. It's nothing is better to have in your kit than a uh, reliable knife. Alright, so just quickly, I'll go over just everything quickly again. So you've got the point, the spine, the belly, the cheek, um, the edge, and the edge is known as the bevel. You can see the bevel along there. The guard or the aquilion, the choil, the handle itself, the pommel or the butt, and if it had a hole, it would be known as the lanyard hole. Cool. Alright, hope that was interesting. Any questions, just give me a yell. Okay, thanks.